plantar fasciitis is the most common cause of inferior heel pain in adults. Although the etiology of plantar fasciitis may be multifactorial, the higher prevalence in runners suggests that overuse or repetitive microtrauma is the contributing factor to this disorder. The plantar fascia is a fibrous aponeurosis deep to the fatty subcutaneous tissue of the plantar aspect of the foot, spanning from the calcinea tuberosity to the proximal phalanges. As some studies found a link between plantar fasciitis and improper foot bar mechanics. Both pes planus and pes cavus may predispose to plantar fasciitis. The diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is generally based on clinical presentations, pain and tenderness at the proximal insertion of the plantar fascia attached to the calcaneal tuberosity area. Sometimes along the plantar aspect of the midfoot is the typical complaint. In most cases, the pain is worst with the first few steps following awakening in the morning or after prolonged rest. Musculoskeletal ultrasound is useful in confirming the diagnosis, especially in patients without typical presentations or refractory to prior treatments. The plantar fascia is best examined with the patient's prong, hanging their feet over the edge of the examination table. The probe is applied to the plantar aspect of the heel. In the long axis view, the plantar fascia can be identified by showing a linear fibular echogenic structure attached to the calcaneal cortex. The whole part of the fascia should be traced carefully, as the fascia is thickest at the proximal end. Its thickness is measured at the proximal attachment to the calcaneus. Normally, the thickness of the fascia should not exceed 4 mm. Fascia thickening greater than 4 mm and a decreased echogenicity establish the diagnosis of frontal fasciitis. Hypervascularity of the fascia and the adjacent subtissue on color Doppler implicates acute plantar fasciitis. In severe cases, partial tear or even complete rupture of the fascia can be observed. Treatment of plantar fasciitis is primarily non-operative, including rest, activity modification, physical therapy, stretching exercise, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, sprinting, foot orthosis, and so on. If unsuccessful, corticosteroid injection to the inflamed fascia can be applied. Ultrasound-guided corticosteroid injection have been reported to improve the therapeutic efficacy by localizing the lesion and the needle placement precisely. The injection is best performed with the patient's prong, just like the position for plantar fascia examination. The needle can be inserted by posterior approach or medial approach. Most recommend a posterior approach with the advantage of allowing easier access to the posterior fascia or region. After skin preparation, the needle is introduced along the long axis plane of the probe. The echogenic metallic needle can be easily identified under ultrasound. A 21 or 23 gauge long needle is preferred because the lesion can be more anterior to the calcaneal tuberosity. If the lesion is far anterior, a medial approach is preferred. This allows approaches to both superficial and deep layer of the plantar fascia without puncturing the fascia. Patients should be instructed that post-injection flare is a rare but existing adverse effect during the first 24 to 48 hours. In conclusion, musculoskeletal ultrasound is useful in diagnosing and treating plantar fasciitis. And the ultrasound guide corticosteroid can be injected to the inflamed fascia accurately, thus increasing the treatment successful rate and decreasing the possible complications.